This podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Why don't you sponsors. go like this and have lightning come from your hands? <sighs> yeah. I'll just do this. Effects. Finishers MMA is located at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA, Lehigh Valley's home for 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. The amount of people that they have over there instructing is insane. They have J.M. Holland, John Thor Blanks opening up 10th Planet Allentown, Zach Meslany, uh, Grace Gundrum. It is elite teaching over there. They teach self-defense, no-gi jiu-jitsu, and kickboxing. They have a kid's martial arts program that is building and growing, and Grace is teaching every single kid's class. Get over there. They are the biggest killers in the game. That's 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. Do you have anything to interject? <laughs> you didn't let me talk. I don't know. No, I, I would like trying to get quicker on that. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, they um, they have multiple schools, and uh, it's www.finishersmma.com. That has their schedule on there, and it has when they rotate everything. And they have evening classes because if you work and you can't get there, they even have I think an eight o'clock class on Wednesday. Um, the thing I like the best is that they treat people with respect. It's not like one of those weird places you go and they talk down to you and. You know, like, like I'm a big bad sensei kind of crap. No, not at all. They're super cool guys. Everybody that goes there is nice. Everybody's friendly. It's just a wonderful place to go and learn jujitsu. Wonderful place to go learn choke people. Yeah. Just go choke some people. Um, every time I've been over there, and I get a little intimidated sometimes going into classes like that, even like going to the gym or like the Y, uh, I get a little uncomfortable. And it's they, they make you feel at home there. Uh, super professional. The guys have been doing it for a while. Zach, JM, and Thor all have their black belts. So, and they have uh, crazy top-notch equipment. Everything is yeah. awesome. It's not some... Yep. Every now and then they do... Awesome. Uh, it's an awesome place. ...seminars and stuff there, too. So check it out. It's finishersmma.com, and uh, they are located at 3761 Nicholas Street in Easton, PA. Their social media is everywhere, so you can go find them. And thank you guys for being a sponsor. Taylor Edge Wood Company. Drew Hoagland. They make handmade and local crafty and bringing you gorgeous custom wood design. If you're looking for a custom table, nightstand, countertop, and more, they can help you. Drew made this table and that desk. A lot yes. of people always have asked us who did this, and it was Taylor Edge Wood Company. Their social media you can find is Taylor Edge Wood Co. on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram has a lot of the pictures and stuff. That's the best place to follow them. They just got the website up. It should be running by the time this airs, but that's TaylorEdgeWoodCo.com, and he's going to have uh, cutting boards on there. Their t-shirts are really cool. I know they're doing fall shirts for that, and uh, he's just a stand-up guy. He's done nothing but help the show since day one and has really ultimate crafting. Yeah, if you're looking to get something different for your home and you don't want to have the same boring home with the same boring box box store, you know, stupid tables that are particle board that are wrapped in crappy vinyl stuff... Check him out. He'll come and give you an estimate, you know, let you pick out whatever you want. He's a crazy nut for uh, black walnut, and he loves the stuff, the smell. He's already. obsessed with crazy. it. It's crazy. It's a little awkward. But he's, <laughs> he's very, uh, very talented. And, uh, yeah, like I said, if you want something custom and nothing says that you're cool, then I have a damn custom table and you don't. Yeah, and he, uh, you get professional quotes. Uh, and he's also got that on the, he's going to be having that on the website yeah. where, uh, you'll be able to get quotes off of there. So if you're looking for locally, top notch, yeah, everything. everything's out of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Support local people. Yeah. So, uh, hit them up. You can hit up Taylor edge Woodco at gmail.com for any inquiries on what you need. Instagram's a good way to get a hold of him and, uh, he runs it with his wife. So they're super local to us and they helped us out since the beginning so please go check them out and thank you for being a sponsor all right our next sponsor is all valley rooter and plumbing jared labarba i've been friends with jared for almost my entire life and uh he came down to the studio looking to sponsor and we had a long conversation and he wanted help building in the nazareth area he has a lot of work in the lehigh valley but he specifically wanted to get into Nazareth and we have a really big reach in Nazareth. It's not a big place, but we do have bigger reach <laughs> than anyone else. Here. We, we control the whole We town. own Nazareth. Uh, but Jared 
went through his whole story and told me everything he's doing, and uh, his plumbing is top notch. Yes. They do um, faucet repair, uh, sub pump re- replacement sink installation, pipe installation, leaks, toilet repair, and more. They have 24-hour service, 365 days a year. They charge by the job, not the hour. All services come with a one-year warranty and guarantee. Uh, He's going to be our plumber from now on if we have any problems with uh, the sink and whatnot. Uh, Having plumbing issues is probably one of the biggest headaches ever. Um, It's one of those things that if something goes bad with your plumbing... It's really bad. There is no minor plumbing issue. And no. it's good to have someone that's local that you can call that you know and say, hey, I really need your help. As opposed to some guy that he's going to spend, you know, he's going to take three hours to get there and he's going to show up. He's going to overcharge you. It's just not worth it. Go with a local guy. Super professional. He can do everything you really want. He lists a bunch of stuff there, but I'm pretty sure he can do pretty much everything involving plumbing. So I'm just going to call him for everything. So. Whatever. Yeah, and you have two uh, properties that you can use them for now, too, because you yeah. didn't have a good experience. No, they were horrible. <laughs> I wish you would say who it was. I really hate that. <laughs> His website is allvalleyrooter.net, and that is the place where you're going to find all of the information you need to get a hold of Jared if you have any plumbing issues or if you're just trying to get quotes for stuff, but they are 365 days a year. They are open 24 hours. And we want to thank him for being uh, one of our first sponsors on the show. It means a lot. And all you Nazareth peeps or anybody in the Lehigh Valley who wants a trusted, reliable, professional plumber, please contact Jared. And our next sponsor is Rips Auto Detail. I love this guy. Go ahead. Uh, One of my favorite guests on the show. Cool. He's a really nice guy. He's a very good DJ also, by the way. Yes, and he's super professional at his job. He's got over 15 years of experience. He is located at 630 North Nelson Street in Allentown, PA. He does paint correction, ceramic coating, interior, and pro auto detail. Uh, If you follow him on Rips Auto Detail on Instagram, it's insane what this guy actually does with a car. Um, I'm... and recommending that you go to Popeye's, which is right up the street, <laughs> and you put fingerprints all over your vehicle, and then you go there, and he will make it perfect again. Yeah. He's got um, 15 years of experience. He's got a package for everyone. Uh, what he stressed on the show is that he doesn't just do super high-end vehicles. Yep. He can do anything from if you just have a daily driver and you just like having a clean car, you can get that done all the way up to getting a boat done. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's worth it because um, I had my uh, my SUV detailed last year, actually, um, just because, especially when you live around here with the salt and everything else, if you get a really good detail on it, it actually will keep your car looking better. Um, than dealing with all the salt because you keep going for car washes and stuff. That's not good. So um, if you get a really good detail on it, it actually will help all that stuff. So it basically winterizes your thing. And plus, if it's when it gets nice out, you just go there and get it, you know, just touched up a little bit, get it, you know, refreshed. And you have a car that doesn't look like you're a slob. You can contact him directly on Instagram, and that's at Rips Auto Detail, or you can call him at 484-553-1366. If you really want to know what this guy does, check out our past podcast with him. It's got a boatload of information. I didn't know, like I knew he was good at what he was doing, and he opened his own business and all that, but to hear the the story of how he got to where he's at yep. and the 15 years experience, he's a super pro. He's a really great guy. Just go check out his stuff at Rips Auto Detail on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, his website is coming soon. So go check him out, and he's one of our first sponsors as well. And we couldn't do the show without all these people, so I want to thank everyone. And uh, shout out to Rips Auto Detail, and yeah. give him a follow. And he gives you a free bucket of chicken. No, the he does not. He gets from Popeye's, because he does. Put that in he there. He doesn't even like Popeye's. Uh, Rips, you need to give out free chicken. Thank you. Check out what he's doing on social media, and uh, we won't use that part. Uh, And then we'll end it with, this is a professional Class A operation. Check out the podcast we did with him. Our next sponsor is Luke Delmeyer Custom Knives. Um, If you've ever wanted a custom knife, say a chef knife, say a camp knife, say any kind of cool custom knives, um, I'm sure any of you guys have watched Forge and Fire or whatever, um, this guy actually does that. Um, he makes wonderful, crazy knives. He's leaps and bounds above anybody you're going to have around here. Um, 
he's a good dude. You can contact him and give him basic parameters of what you want to make for our custom knives. He does sell his own knives on his website. Yeah, there's, a, bu- there's a bunch of different knives on the website and Luke, his Instagram as well. Instagram, he puts it up a little bit and he'll say, hey, man, I'm selling this. Um, his website is Um Yeah, I mean, he lists a bunch of stuff. Like I said, you can ask for the custom stuff. He's starting a new line, which you can talk about, of the chef knives. Yeah, the chef knife that uh, he brought over to the studio was incredible because he showed me the demo one that they started with that he made out of a leaf spring, which is insane. But then um, what he handed off to me I immediately just wanted to start yes. <laughs> prepping and cutting onions. You, you, you were trying to. I was excited to cook, yeah, and you, that's what a that's what a chef knife should do. And uh, if you you're just looking, kept telling him you wanted to use it to cut something. I did, and uh, if you're looking like. for a, a chef knife or any sort of custom knives that you would like in your life for whatever reason, this guy, the amount of work that he's putting behind it, the craftsmanship that's behind his actual craft with blacksmithing. The dude's extremely talented, extremely humble, and uh, please go check out his social media, and it's Luke Delmeyer at Instagram. That's where you're going to get a lot of his knives. He's testing the knives. Um, But you forgot the coolest part. What's that? You want to make your own knife? Yeah. He's got classes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. He has his own classes. You can go there, look like an idiot, because that's what I'll probably look like when I do mine, Um, but you can go there, and he offers classes and teaches you how to make a knife. And I think that's awesome because there is no one and nowhere in this area that does that. No. And if you're looking for a custom knife of any range, whether it's uh, something that you're just looking for hiking or if you're looking for a chef knife or you're just looking to collect something as a hobby, go check out his social media, check out his web page, get in touch with him and uh, see which knife is right for you. And that's LukeDelmeyer.com. And uh, thank you for being a sponsor. Never Again, episode 47. There it is. Welcome the fuck back, gentlemen. How the hell are you? We were only doing audio the last time you came in. Correct. Everything has changed. There's so much going on in the world. Yeah, this is man. amazing. I love this table. I like what you have going on here, man. Thank you, man. I like everything. I'm a fan. I like everything you've been doing, man. I it's been a very... Uh, uh, I think the first time... Uh, that we got together, it was like in an apartment, I like on just like a chair next to the window. <laughs> yeah, it was my apartment <laughs> up the street, I believe. And yeah. then we went from there, and then we were in. <clears throat> I rented a. I think I rented a studio next, and then no, we went to Chris's apartment because there was a lot more people involved then. And then we went from Chris's apartment to the Bethlehem underground apartment you might have been there but that was still only audio then the the landlord was a weirdo and used to keep coming into our space because we had security Mm. cameras and then um it went from there to easton and then finally this has been the easiest place to do it it's underground yeah i I can do whatever the fuck i want down here no one has a clue as to what i'm doing they just always ask what is this here i just lie to them usually (laughs) it's an antique store (laughs) i love i love it man i love it thanks like a gallery yeah yeah it's uh it's been fucking a long fucking time because even when you we talked about trying to do this before and then i was like man when's the last time they came on and i was like oh it was space camp but it was only audio and the studio wasn't even set up to be a studio at that point yeah i don't i don't i, I didn't know it was here but it yeah was but just it was like that, a couple chairs it was like the ufc area yeah, you know, yeah, yeah which was over here yep he definitely did not have long hair and i definitely didn't have a beard at that point i had a little beard and there was three of you oh wow yeah. and there was three of us anyway. yeah yeah, it was three of us. Yeah, fun times. You know, yeah, Everything's changed so much. Where the where what has changed since the last time you guys were in here? Because you put I don't even you guys just had music out then. You didn't even have an album, did you? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess uh, keep going. I'm just gonna check on these things. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, we just had. We, I guess we had like just a uh, terpene station out then. And now that I look back, we were getting. We we yeah. I think we just dropped terpene station. All right, I believe yeah. we're getting ready to drop to our peace station. Well, we came out, we came out like kind of guns blazing right away, right? Like we put music out almost instantly after we got together. Because yeah. originally, Space Camp was like the idea was to be like a like a Wu Tang Clan of stoners. Yeah, you know, like a bunch of people that I met through touring and these guys and um, yeah, because you guys were all friends. It wasn't like you guys didn't know each other. Right, exactly, exactly. And the idea wasn't even for it to be like a group at first, right? And uh, I've known Split 
Um, I've known Split for, man, since the first mixtape I ever did. You know, before I even put a record out, I knew Split. Uh, he actually engineered like a mixtape for me back in the day with Rest in Peace Brooklyn Payne. Um, had a studio in Allentown, Center City. I recorded my first mixtape there, and Split was an apprentice for uh, Payne tattooing and uh he was engineering him and uh so that's how i met split so then years years later thinking about this space camp thing and getting all these stoners together split was just naturally we were at a show and uh and i had like probably 10 15 people on the list that i wanted to get together and have this like collective you know of like stoners and shit and, uh, and i was talking to split about it oski was kind of already on that list and Oski was at that show like wandering around and Split was the one that's like yo Oski too and I think after we we went outside the three of us smoked a couple of joints and we came back in with the idea of just like it being us three yeah yeah and um <clears throat> but I think what happened was is that uh it was ad lib and split and Oski just like MCs that knew each other from shows and knew each other as like MCs on, on that tip and I think that when we first got together, I, I love I love Terpene Station, but it's very clear that it was just like super fun. We wrote it in probably two weeks, the whole record. Um, and at that time, it was like we're only going to only going to rap about smoking tree and taking psychedelics. Like I remember pushing that agenda probably the most too. Like telling yeah. you guys, like these guys would have like amazing verses i'd be like yo it's a little bit you're saying too much you know what i mean like let's just talk about trees and shit like that you know yeah. and um so so that's how we kind of went at it but once you start touring yeah because then you guys went on tour together which <laughs> right. was fun to watch on instagram yeah, yeah. it's so much fun right around the same time i started like super experimenting with like lsd and like mushrooms and, have like, you ever really like, messed with that stuff before i mean like <clears throat> I, I did it like Two, twice like twice yeah. with like my buddy Gibbs right I did it like twice and just tripped out with him so like I wasn't really into it right but then he was like we gotta rap about psychedelics man we gotta like <laughs> nah, 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 right? so then so then right around the time we started touring right like we started like realizing like who each other were yeah. right you know a little bit right and I was like super doing the drugs right so I was like yeah give me the drugs give me the LSD give me the mushrooms and I was taking them like on tour Right, and it, I just came back home and I started taking it and like listening to classic rock. Yeah, right, and like starting to get. Cause, cause he was like, "Yo, we need, we need to, we need to like, we need to go in a different direction. We need to go in a different direction." So I'm like, "All right, man, I'll go in that direction." So I just dove into that direction and like started eating all these things and like having these experiences. And I was like, "Yo, we need to be this thing, like you know." Yeah. So things started like slowly morphing. Like, yeah. In like the past, like what three, four years? Yeah, I like, think I, I think I think what it, it was is really uh, like like what you say, like just being on the road and getting to know each other as not just like people from the neighborhood. Yeah, and then what happens is, and that's why Split is like still a best friend. Like you know what I'm saying? His yeah. his EP comes out um, in, in twenty six. Right? Yes, it'll be out now yeah. when this when this airs. His his EP will be out. But I think sometimes you have to take two two destinations to get to the same to get to the same ending you yeah. know what i'm saying if that makes sense two paths to the same destination i guess is the way to say it so i think that like when we started the group um that that being the the what we were all about is like our, our the communal thing that we had in common was trees and, and I guess me and, and and split a little more with the psychedelics. Now I thought, yeah. I thought this guy was yeah, he's like coming out there. He's like making me feel bad. <laughs> I'm I'm glad, man. No, but, uh, but uh, no <laughs> but, strong arm. But that was like the communal thing that we had. You know yeah. what I'm saying when we got together. So it was almost like some stony like Beastie Boys Cypress Hill shit. Yeah. But once we start touring and getting to know each other and seeing like inspirations and stuff like that, I think it started to be more clear like that Oski and myself were wanting to do some way more like exp Left. weird weirder shit you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying and not just do uh like a hip hop record and and continue to do that same kind of thing and there's that's not even like a this and that at all you know what i mean cuz that's that's still the foundation but i think that that's what it was and and split didn't sign up for that yeah. you know what i'm saying oh, like no absolutely you know what i mean so like uh, so it wasn't even really a situation of like breaking up it was a situation of three friends being like yo look 
you two dudes want to do some super weird shit. You guys want to sing and you guys want to fucking, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You guys are like <clears throat> wanting to bring instruments into the shit. You know what I'm saying? And like, and splits a fucking lyricist. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. an MC. Yeah. So it's like, how can we help each other? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the three of us getting to the end goal and like being able to like, you know, do what we love. It's like, yo, how's the best way to do that? The best way is for you to do to continue to go that path of what you really love and for us to do what we really love and not kind of like because i think the record was never coming out because of like just because of that yeah you know and it wasn't even like arguing it was just kind of like split one to do cert you know yeah. split one to do what he's great at at least you guys were good enough friends that it didn't ruin your friendship and that Fuck you could just no. be honest not with each all. other and be not like hey look i'm trying to do this and if somebody's not on board because i'm into weird stuff all the time and if nobody's on board with that weird project or if it's two people and then there's one person who's like i don't really know you know i'm not feeling that at all it could definitely get weird and divided yeah. and could go down a dumb path yeah well that's how i remember you i you hit me up about it or something and you were like there's no bad blood in this at all and i was like oh that's good you're like no it's just mutual adult Hey, I think I want to work on that. Yeah, and the yeah. crazy thing about it, like, if you look at it from, like, like we're both doing our different things, but, like, we complement each other because it's, like, almost putting pushing, like, the same idea. Yeah. Like, the same visuals, just in his own way and in our own way. And like, he's on know? the new album as well. Yeah, yeah he's, he's on the yeah. album, yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it all comes together. Like he said, it's two different paths, but, like, the objective's the same, right? It's just his side of the story and our side of the story. We want to tell different things in our music. That's all. Yeah, and even mm -hmm. on the back end, like we're we're, you know, helping w with his his record. He's helping us with our record. Yep. Um, his EP came out under the same distribution. You know, what I mean, we're yep. all work. We're, yeah, same. I I felt like we're even tighter now, because there there was like, at some point, like you say, like there, at some point, if if I think the main thing is if you're having a business. Or if you're doing any kind of thing when you're dealing with friends, like when you're mixing business and you're mixing art, especially with friendship, you have to be honest. You know what I'm saying? With each other. Because the second you hold your tongue, that's something you're going to have to sit with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and sooner or later, it, it becomes like it can become a bitterness thing. And I think we were both seeing that it, it wasn't going to uh, at, at the end of the day, it never got to that point. Because I think that we all sat early, early in this situation was like, yo, look, you know, like art wise and like all that kind of stuff was mm -hmm. like, it was pretty obvious. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and Split was like, yo, boom, like, let's do it like this. And we were, we were basically saying the exact same, all of us together. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how, I like bands and stuff like that that tour together. When like, when you grind it out, like on the road, unless somebody's a real dick, I don't know how, like people can split up like that with the with the you know unless there's like money or like fucking some like it's grimy like, shit involved you know what i mean I don't it's know. probably like what you said though it's people holding their tongue yeah and then it just starts it's exact you described it perfectly because it's like if you don't say anything then there's this fucking thing that you're complaining to people about and then it just keeps building right. it up and then you make a thing that's a giant spectacle out of what should have been a conversation between two people. Yeah. 100%. And especially in art, you have to be able to feel freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have yeah. to be able to feel um, like what you're doing is is your your heart and soul and, and your truth. You know? So like if you're, if, if, if we, I think right now, like when we come to the table, um, almost instantly we know like if I'm not really 100% on, on something or he's not like it's almost like a thing where like egos aside you don't have to be like yo I really want to push this fucking idea like this guy writes fucking songs like crazy amounts of songs he knows at this point like there can be an honest thing between us was so like yeah that's not really going to be my thing boom and we just move on we don't have a hold hold a kind of grudge or yeah, you know yeah. you get twice as much done that way 100 percent, man 100 percent. did the two of you uh tour separately then because you guys released music with just the two of you didn't you no not yet not oh, yet yeah. this, so is, this, this is this is it what yeah. i got to listen to i actually listened to it today while i was working oh. is what all this has turned into is the two of you's project yeah, yeah. correct yeah. it's really good 
I liked. I even wrote down names of songs that I liked. <laughs> uh, I didn't know what to expect of it because uh, it is very different from the original stuff that you guys released. This seems yeah. more. Uh, you have your idea down. You have your vision down. You're almost telling stories. Uh, it has a really cool fucking vibe to the album. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome, bro. No, and I like seeing too is. I remember when you guys were first doing this, you were kind of like, I just want to have fun with my friends and like, this is what the fuck I want to do now. And it nice, it's nice to see you found your lane in it as well, coming from what you were doing before and then now what you're doing. Uh, I didn't know what to expect out of, out of it at all, but I played the whole thing front to back. And yeah. I was just like, this is good. That's it, awesome. What man. did you guys do in creating the album? You went out to Rob the Viking? Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. Canada? Yeah, we yep. went to British and Columbia. Columbia. How was that? Because is that the first time that I know if he's done stuff and worked with him before? Is this the first time that you kind of had something on yeah, that that's level? The first time, like I, I've been with Rob a couple times. Like I've ate with him, but this is the first time I was able to go to like Chamber Studios and see him work. How was that for you? Were you like overwhelmed, or you were just oh, like, nah. "Fuck it, I'm gonna do a bunch of drugs"? <laughs> nah, nah. When it, when it comes to like, I get overwhelmed like on back end stuff. Yeah. Like when it comes to like creating, that's the art, true. I get that. Yeah, when it comes to the creating the art, that's like where I'm like most mostly excited, right? So like I wasn't overwhelmed. I was just more like happy, and excited, and like trying to like say stuff like, "Hey man, what do you think about this noise?" Because I didn't, I don't know how to work with him, and I didn't know he was just gonna be like, "Yo, you need to sit down, dude." Like, I know what I'm doing, but he was like super like. He was open to yeah, your he opinions was super open and to ideas. Any idea, man, and he would just do it. He would just go whip out a piano out, like at the back, and just be like, "Oh, you want that sound? Cool. You gotta go help me lift this piano and drag it over here." Ah, oh, that must have been so much and then, fun. And then, like, That's I'll awesome. be like, "Oh man, can you do this like little nah 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 nah?" And he will just do whatever you wanted, man. Like you know, because he has a vision too, and he like really put the album together with like creating the whole art, which was super dope, man. But yeah, it was a great time. Canada's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. How much fun? It's a, to me. It was a very fun. There's like there's a fun vibe in it. Like it gets a little weird, but then it comes back, and it kind of it's like being high. It's like, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like the ups and downs of that. Yeah. Like uh, some sure. of it gets super deep. Where I was like, oh man, if I was really fucking high, I would trip the fuck out on this. Even the intro. The intro I think is my favorite part because I was like, oh okay. Like immediately I knew I was like, all right. I'm like this is setting the tone for it. And then yeah. I was just like, it was. There was a lot of really cool... I want to get back into it. I want to listen to it in my car. I have a really good sound system in my car, but I was listening to it down here. And uh, I'm excited for you guys. I, it's really Thank fucking you. good. Thank, Thank you, you so man. much. Yeah, it was crazy to see like what Rob did with like what we gave him. Yeah. Like the demos that we sent him. You know, because obviously we, re we recorded everything there with him, but like we sent him demos, you know what I mean? Of like, And, and this guy will do a, a song over just like a bass line. You know what I mean? And, and um, I think a lot of the demos that we had were, were like that. They were just yeah. like not songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Songs. So like what he created was, he, yeah. It was super he really, skeletons. Yeah, he really brought the vision to life. It was crazy. Because mm. you worked with him on the, what, Teenager from Mars? Yeah, we did. And that had, like, I was paying attention to the noises and the beats in the back. Yeah. And there was a lot of that where I would hear shit. And I was just like, Ooh. even, like, the first one, because I wrote it down, it's New Strain. Like, even, like, the backgrounds on that. Yeah. Like, did he work all that out? Or is that shit you guys were throwing him and be like, put this in the pot. Put this in the pot. Well, so put, and then you so with, with that one, uh, that the demo, it's crazy. The, the demo, um, the original demo that he wrote was probably what two years ago three years yeah, ago two years ago it was over like this little like almost like a mac miller beat that's what it originally started on. like i just searched on youtube and we were rapping over it right and then like split was I, like i'm not doing it and then it was like uh it's not that bad i like it but i love the hook like like yeah but uh, but when he first brought it, he had he yeah, his was verse was rapping he was rapping, was rapping on it and then, like, you know, I kept pushing the hell out of that song, I love right? that, yeah. And I was like, bro, this song, right? And, like, two years went by, and then I was like, I'm getting this fucking song, right? So after, <laughs> after I was like, you know, after a couple trips, right, a couple trips, and I'm listening to the, all the classic rock and all this shit, I stumbled across, like, Little Wing, right? Jimmy Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, right? It was the Stevie, Stevie, Stevie Ray, Ray Vaughan, Vaughan version. Stevie Ray Vaughan version, 
like came along because he was like, "You can't do it to this karaoke shit. I'm not doing it." Right, so I'm like, "Oh man, these guys just don't understand." <laughs> right, so I'm like, I find the Stevie Ray Vaughan version, which is just a clear in the instrumental of him ripping the fucking guitar, right, and playing the whole shit. So I was like, "Cool," and then like, I kind of did the verses and changed it up, and like started singing it, and just start, and I just sang my verse, and I was yeah, like, was it. "Fuck them, they're gonna feel this because I'm gonna sing the whole shit, yeah. and they're gonna be like, wow like, if they don't get it, they don't get it.'" And then when I brought that, they were like, "Wow." You know what's funny that you say that now is that that was that song, "New Strains," is the song that was what we were kind of talking about before. That was kind of the song, and that moment was kind of the. The moment where we all kind of came to that realization, because yeah. when he brought it with Little Wing, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. I loved it, and I think I wrote my verse in five, you know, five ten minutes. Yeah. I was like, it was one split. of the things that just wrote to itself. And Split was kind of looking at us like, "You guys are bugging." Yeah. <laughs> but he loves it now. He loves, he loves, it, loves it now. now. Yeah, he loves yeah. it now. No, he I think I think it, it was the perfect it. way to introduce the yeah. fucking album. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, oh, because right. <clears throat> you know. Like, as soon as I put it on, I was like, I don't know where this is going to go. And then I started hearing the beat. And then when it all started, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. You can tell the whole, that that sets the tone for the album. To me, it was his laugh, right? Because like, because like. Yes, because it starts out with that first, correct? You say like, you feel like you're you're high, right? Yes. So when you laugh, you take a thing and like you eat a mushroom, you pop a tab, right? Whatever you do. And you're like, ah, it's not kicking in. It's not kicking in. Then all of a sudden you feel that shit and you just start laughing. Like, you know, you start laughing and start having a good time. So it's kind of like that. You hear the cup drop, electric lemonade gets poured in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he starts laughing. And his laugh was perfect. Yeah. Because we were arguing about who was doing the hook, right? And then he went, in the, he went in the booth. And I was like, yo, listen, I don't care. I'm singing the hook. And he started laughing. And I was like, yeah, you got to keep it. Rob, you got to keep that laugh. Yeah, it was perfect. How long were you guys out there for the, for the whole process? Uh, like a week, I think. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's got to be so much fun to just be able to just focus. Out that was awesome. The yeah. whole fucking week on getting that done. And, and yeah. we were coming in off of a super high because we recorded the, um, we recorded the title track, Electric Lemonade. Yeah, we recorded that in San Francisco at yeah. uh, Hyde at Street. Hyde Street, which was formerly uh, Wiley Hyder. So like one took over the line was recorded yeah. in that room. Uh, Grateful Dead did American Beauty in that room. I remember you posting about that. Yeah. You know? So uh, like Kanye was there the week before us. You know what I mean? It was yeah, like some whole. Hard. So it was like a this board and this whole like there was just this energy. Frank Sinatra's uh, you know piano was in the room. You know what I mean? In the booth and and um, so we recorded the title track there. And then we went to Rob's. So like mm-hmm. the energy that we came into Rob's with was already like on another level up here. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were already on some like in the cool. zone. In the zone. Cool. Yeah. Feeling super groovy. Yeah. Good time. What is track two? Is it the Adidas track? Yeah. 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 And that sets the tone where it's because it starts out with you singing, correctly. Correct. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm right and then right. I was just like, oh, I was like, all right. And then I don't know. It was just those two right out the gate. I feel like set the tone over the whole thing because then I didn't know how I felt about it at first. And then when I started playing, I was like, no, all right. I'm like, no, I do like this. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then it. I don't know. I was impressed by the whole album. Like it's it's good. And then the Adidas one. Now is that you? Did you come up with that whole song by yourself? Nah, this guy, he, he came up he came up with the whole, like, all day I dab and smoke idea, right? And he was like, yo, we got to put this in a song. We got to put this in a song. Mm-hmm. And then I, at the time, was super still, like, in that rap thing, right? Because Adidas is kind of like a, like a year old, right? Adidas is like a year. Well, yeah, ago, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, the idea of Adidas. The is line, like a year. the line is actually from uh, from Terpene Station. Yeah. So the first song that we all wrote together, uh, in that song, I said, "All day I dab and yeah. smoke in my Adidas." So he he was wanting to doing it for a while, right? Yeah. But like that was another one. I had that over like a Migos instrumental, white t shirt. <laughs> I think it was like, and he was like, "I'm not doing that." Yeah, right? it wasn't. Yeah, and then like, he came up with the beat, right? What was it, the ninety three to infinity beat? Yeah, we started doing it over like yeah. that, and then and like I that, thought I heard and that, that, and that's in how there. and that's how we do the demos, yeah. man. It's like we just like we'll write a song and we'll just we'll just play with it. We'll play with the idea of the song, whether it's the hook or whether it's a verse and not a hook. We'll have like these kind of ideas that yeah. that want that he'll come with it or I'll come with that. We really like zone into that part, 
and then we'll try it over a million things yeah. you know what i'm saying before we send it out before it gets to rob so like adidas probably had three or four different versions yeah. of but just like kind of though. having that idea and before it went to rob but the idea gotta be solid though yeah. the idea gotta be super solid you gotta know the song gotta work yeah at and, the end and uh every time except for adidas really um once it gets to rob it come it becomes something totally different where he's yeah. just taking that tempo but with that one he was like yo like i'm just gonna flip i'm gonna flip the i'm gonna play live you know the original shit like like so he kind of redoes 93 till infinity somewhat you know what i mean it's no, a little bit different tempo yeah, yeah i was like and, wait and is that and then i was just like all right and then it picks it. up and then i was just like oh okay this works yeah yeah it's fire yeah man but we wrote it we banged it out and yeah. it was amazing yeah it was, it was amazing the hook changed a little bit the hook changed because the hook the hook isn't original hook either the hook changed a little bit up yeah you know yeah the next one I had was uh, "Girl Like You." Who was involved in that one? That one stood out to me as well. That was um, so. That was like one of the last song. It's crazy that the whole album kind of how took, the order is. Yeah, when you don't when it's created. Yeah, yeah cha everything changes, right? Yeah. Like so. So the original album, um, "Girl Like You," five hundred miles, homegrown. Yeah, five hundred miles um, I had on there as well. Those those three songs and "Life's a Beach." Those <clears throat> yeah. four songs. So really. Uh, forty percent of the album was different, so we had a different we had different songs that we had picked, um, and it was it was a much heavier album to be honest. Yeah, it, it was a much it heavier light. album. It wasn't light. It's lighter now. Yeah, it's real light. I like yeah. that's what I liked about it too. Yeah, and um, and I think what happened was is like, just um, the girl like you came on some like weird shit. I was just like driving to the studio, and I was like just fucking around in the car. And I got there and I was singing it to him and um and then we were like, All right, fuck it, let's let's do a demo. And uh and we did a demo and um our like local home home team like engineer, um, shout out Big City. Um, Big City was like, Yo, you guys you guys should really fuck with this one. Yeah. You know, and then um and then so that so I think we started putting a little more energy into it. Yeah, because at first I kinda didn't tightened do it. it up. At first I didn't want to do it. I was like, I don't wanna sing that song, dude. And he was like, you don't understand, bro. You don't see the vision yet. <laughs> it's, it's funny how you guys said the same thing to each other yeah. when you want your song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, but, but you know what, though? We kind of know when, to, like I was saying before, we know when to back off and yeah, when not yeah, to. Yeah, 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 man. And then I was like, cool, man. Because I, 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 I Can like, revisit I like it in two music. years and get your way? <laughs> I, like, I like, yeah, I like writing music. You know, I like writing music and I like writing all sorts of music. So I was like, fuck it. I'll write, I'll write a verse. I don't think this is going to be a good song. And then, then I wrote my verse. And I was like, damn, my verse is dope. I like it. <laughs> it's a great song now. I was like, man, we got to do this song now. And then we got the beat, and I was like, ah, oh, shit, man. It's going to be a good song. What's it? It's got to be fun for, especially with how long you've been doing this, where you can because like some, that's where I'll come up with t-shirt ideas and shit it's when you're in your car, listening to music, you're yeah. just kind of by yourself, you're in a zone, you're not thinking about work, bills, and you're just shit's going on in that career that's my favorite thing about creating is when you learn how to actually create and then put it into music or put it on a piece of canvas or to do anything with t-shirt it's like you can you now know the process so it's so much fun we're like you're driving on the way there and you get out and you're just like it's like kind of like when you wake up from a dream with an idea where if you yeah. don't put it down right away right. you're like fuck, exactly. fuck 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 so i mean to get out of a car and then have the access to pitch something to him then kick it to somebody else or like all right put music to it and it's that's uh I love hearing those stories because that's when shit's created when you're fucking not bothered by stress and bills and you're just fucking yeah. and it, and it's a good like working with other people like it, it, the, I think the, like the best part about it that I think the reason it makes you a better artist no matter what the medium is is like because you get your fucking ego checked yeah. you see what yeah. I'm saying so yeah. like like your good ideas can be expanded and turned into better ideas and your ideas that are eh can get put on the back burner you know yeah. what I'm saying and, and like Whereas, like, if it was my, you know, if I was just doing some solo shit, that initial idea might have been the end result. You know what I mean? That initial idea that I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, and I might have just had that, you know what I mean, finish that. But when you're working with somebody else and they're like, eh, you know what I mean? Then, then that little two years that it can sit and simmer, slow cook it, you know, I always like shit out the crock pot. Man, That's what man. I like, man. You know what I mean? Like, let it let it slow cook, like, like new strains, um... 
girl like you like some of my favorite songs that we have are songs adidas are songs that like we both liked but it kicked around for a while until yeah. it until it like kind of grew its own legs and, yeah. and found its time i'm know? even i'm even starting to uh to learn that process and like i've been having this like summer line idea for a while and uh i hit up my friend and she does like flannels and i always try and help anybody trying to do clothing so i was like you know hey what do you think about doing uh a design for this and she's like yeah we should work on it and then she took my idea and was just like hey um i'm not like like that whole idea isn't really who i am or like how can i be represented in this so i had to stop and be like well, do you want to just create your idea and keep it narrow-minded and you know what the end product is or do you want to see what comes out of this? It's like kind of like going to a tattoo artist. You can force them to tattoo exactly what you want or you can let them kind of create right. the idea yeah. behind it. So I was like, all right, I wouldn't be opposed to this. So then we started going back and forth. We actually changed the name of what I wanted to do. And then now I'm like, oh, well, this is cool because now this isn't going to be Mike's narrow-minded direction of what he wanted right. which some people would enjoy but now that i have her direction and then i take a part of axelrod's direction now you have the vision of three artists giving you three different options to exactly. choose from yeah. so like what you guys were saying it's still getting to the end result yeah. but it's just taking different paths to get there yeah. I don't, I, that's such a huge thing with growth yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah this yeah. album has a lot of growth yeah and just taking time man like letting shit simmer man yeah you know i, I like i think the you know, the, the way the things are right now is a gift and a curse where it's like everything is so fast. Um, I, I prefer like for shit to be much more like thought out and wait. Yeah. I'd rather wait a year, two years to put something out. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. As far as, far as project wise, that's not, not saying like songs, you know, you like a song, um, yeah. you put it out. But like as far as like an album or, or, or a piece of like work, like I want the I want the art, I want everything to be something that i can live with forever this yeah. is part of like this is this is gonna sit you know yeah. so i think it's important to do that i think it's like we were saying earlier like there's and i was talking to guys upstairs like there's a gift and a curse to what's going on and there's definitely a silver lining and i was trying to explain it to somebody where it's like i feel like i'm i'm grounded but then i'm getting homework done so like i'm learning but like you were saying like you can focus there's a lot more focus now on singular things because you're you can't go do all this stuff you're not able to go on tour i mean that was a big part of what you guys were coming up to and yeah. now you have to change all that change your direction and it's like it, something might come out of this that wouldn't have came out of this before oh 100 yes. I, I mean yeah. you know for for independent art like for for like a up-and-coming guys like if there is any kind of like silver lining in 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 whatever it is that it's putting like artist on the kind of a more level playing field you i just think it saying? forces you to be more creative yeah you know you know definitely and like what you were saying too is like there's so much going on where it's like if you start something you have it's to like, be creative you yeah. have to have your image going on you have to have your social media going on you have to have your music going you have to get on tour yeah. where this has really allowed me to be like okay well now i can start using these tools and learning them right. and being able to push them in different directions because i have to stay here because i'm not going to meetings and doing all this stuff and it's right. it's uh it's it's weird it's like backwards almost to the what used to be normal but i think there isn't going to be a normal after this and it's going to be creative avenues that people are going to be going down that would have never even went down it before yeah i mean yeah. It, it's definitely been a time to be able to like check yourself and and like figure out like you know what i mean like some yeah. people are just you know I, I think it's a good time like you were saying like you can you can learn right now some new things and and put focus on on singular things that you yeah. want to accomplish and um you always got to look for the best you know what i'm saying you always yeah. got to look for the better the better of the situation right like instead of putting you know i think right now especially man people put so much focus on the negative so much so much so much focus it's like i just try to tune that out if it's not yeah. something that i can control personally then i try not to let it take any of my energy you know yeah. or as little energy yeah. as possible until i can get to the point where i can check myself and say like yo stop putting energy into this you yeah. know what i mean like so like you know even when this whole first thing started, man, I started getting caught up. I'm like, you know, like everybody, man, was like, oh, the news. I realized, like, yo, what are you gonna do? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can I can control like what I can control. Yeah, that's it. As long as I'm doing my best to like 
treat others how I wouldn't want them to be treated and to like move in that kind of a, a, as a kind human, as a, as a, as a, as a caring human. It's all you can do, man. Like, I yeah. don't know. You know, I can't put focus on anything else. Nah, you know? I can't put no focus on that right now. I don't, you know? I haven't wanted to focus on anything other than creating yeah. and yeah. keeping this going because that's the stuff that makes me happy. Right. Yeah. yeah. And all the other bullshit was noise to begin with. So, I mean, it's still there. It's just different noise, but like, right. You know, it took about two weeks, and then I was like, what are you doing? You can keep doing this. I was doing Zoom podcasts. I moved the most apparel I've moved in a really long time because I pushed it harder on yep. social media. Right. But then I found out that I was like, oh, that's how hard I need. To. I thought I was hitting social media too hard. I wasn't even scratching social media. Right. Then when I hammered social media, I sold out of two T-shirts, and I was like, oh, I would have never learned that. Yeah. Right, 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 right. I don't know. Yeah. It's right. a weird time crazy times what did uh how was 500 miles with you guys that was another one that stood out for me well that was crazy this guy this guy gave me a phone call and he was like yo the album's missing like an acoustic guitar right so i was like just something raw was like, not necessarily yeah, acoustic I was but like, something raw i was like i was like acoustic guitar bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that like, i love that all right all right cool <laughs> so you know i'm like boom i'm searching like what is this guy talking and i just found like some little riff like it was just a riff right and I wrote the hook, and I wrote my verse, and I sent it to him. And I called him, and I did it over the phone. He was like, yo, that's amazing. And he wrote his verse, and then we sent it over to our buddy Tab. And Tab, the first beat that Tab sent me, I was like, I was like, I love it, but we can't do that. Like, we could not do that. Yeah, because he started to bring, he, he made, he did like what, with the rest of the demos yeah. where it's yeah. like he just he did it over this something really raw and it turned into something bigger yeah. and I think we wanted to just tone it back keep yeah, it really natural it, yeah, I wanted, can't fire shit yeah I wanted I wanted just to like you know be soft and like just take you somewhere I guess and it worked out perfectly because the second joint he sent over was amazing and I was like that's what we need yeah. and I'm like that and he killed it killed it and then he laid the vocals on it he did the hook right he sang the hook and I was like yo he crushed it there was a lot that stood out on that album to the point where i was like you're almost writing down the whole album ah. <laughs> you know what i mean like i was like oh i'll use these as references to the stuff that i really liked yeah and then like i just stopped kind of writing it down because i was like every other oh, one man. i was like they each kind of had their own I, I mean if that's what you were going for like with the whole high vibe on it like i definitely felt like i was on uh like a journey with you guys. It was, it was, it was cool. Awesome, it was yeah, cool. It's, it's like, I, I can't wait to like, like it's, it, it screamed like kind of a couple of them were like very like beach, like outside. Like it, it made me want to be outside in the sun. Like, uh, awesome. it made me want to be fucking high, uh, at the beach. <laughs> 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 drinking Coronas. Yeah. 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 There was yeah, a lot a on there. Uh, I feel like you guys had a message in the album. I feel like you had a direction in the album. And in my personal opinion, from listening to it, I think you hit a fucking home run with it. Hey, man, Thank I mean, you. I think it's not bad. I think it's not a bad little tune to listen to, man. We really put it together, you know. Yeah, and I think the two the uh, you just that, that makes me very happy. That he was talking about the summer, you know what I mean? Just yeah. like that outside vibe, because yeah. I think that that's that's kind of where we started going with it, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was a much heavier and album. And I, I think after uh, after Homegrown, and then and then we were talking about when I hit him up and, and was kind of talking about having just something like a campfire, yeah, acoustic guitar, or just some bongos or something like that. Um, I, I think after those two songs, then we started being like, oh, okay, like let's yeah. let's kind of, you know, yeah. let's because because then we realized that the record wasn't coming out in the winter. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. You know what I mean? No, so at that point, don't. yeah. And then we, with the art and stuff you sent over for t-shirts and whatnot, like that, I was like, ah, oh, I'm like this all with the tie dye, the the bright colors. Like, uh, I was just like, this is, it's really completely branded and wrapped up nicely. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. It wanted to make a a complete a complete kind of project, man. That, could, that you know we could be proud of. So what was the original plan before all this bullshit happened? Is that you guys booked out? <coughs> A summer tour? It was supposed to be the summer of love, yeah. 2020. Oh, that would have been a fucking blast. And you guys would have like wrapped the van again and yeah, did all yeah. that I mean, shit. You know, it's still the summer of love, 2020. We're just going to yeah. take it all the way from 2020 to the summer of 2021. It's just going to be a continuing <laughs> yeah. all through winter. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, if people got to be locked inside, you know, for that long, you know, we'll just take it all the way until next summer. But that was a plan. Yeah. You yeah. Know? We had we had to cancel uh, the Canada tour. It was yeah. in April. So we and canceled that. sucks because you... 
know so many people in Canada, and that <sighs> yeah, it was huge. tough. It was Canada tough for was us. Um, I mean, the 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 blessing though, the silver lining of all that is that the record got pushed back to June. So yeah. the record record was originally going to come out in April, and it would have sounded the same, but um, it was originally going to come out in April, and now you know it, it's coming out in June. You know, we although we had to cancel those shows, it's not like I don't think that the promoters. They were. They had already booked the tour without hearing the record. Yeah. yeah. So now I feel like we're gonna almost be in a better position once touring goes back into play, because now the record will have been out, and all those guys, all those like talent buyers and promoters are, you know, people that are gonna hear the record, and uh, I think it's gonna actually help us out. And so, you might end yeah. up growing the tour just because there's gonna be so many people wanting to book as much shit as they possibly 100%. can. Yep. There'll be people that probably won't continue to hustle and they'll stop performing. So you'll be able right. to probably plug and play new shit. And, and we switched. We switched lanes too. Like we're able to do this, uh, this like summer of love contest where we wouldn't have been able to do that. I, I don't know that we wouldn't have been able to, but if we were touring, I think it would have been more difficult to do to do like this contest. And and um, we're given, you know, we're given. Yeah, why don't you go to over charity. the contest? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so basically, more or less, is uh, the pre-orders. Anybody that pre-orders the album um, can and basically. Uh, can be entered into the contest. The winner's going to get a Rebel Hippies and Space Camp gift pack. They're going to get an advanced copy of the album. But then yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to donate $1,000 to a charity that the winner is going to be able to choose. Um, oh, that's cool. And yeah. then um, and then what we're going to do on top of that is do like a live stream show that'll be dedicated to bringing awareness to that charity. So and then hopefully uh you know that'll br hope open up to that live stream can open up to more um donations going to the charity yeah. so and we, we didn't want to kind of put the record out uh during all this shit, shit and be like hey man come pre-order our album like times are fucking everybody yeah. lost their job now buy our album you know it's what i mean yeah so we want to kind of do our part to kind of you know what we can do to give back you know what yeah. i'm saying so it's like yo well, i know we're asking you to spend 10 bucks but you know what I mean? Like we're gonna give back some, some, some as much as we can, and do what we can do. And that's typical your behavior. I mean, you do the toys for tots, and you're always, uh, you're always doing stuff for charity to begin with. So then to incorporate it in what you're doing with this, it's just a, a no brainer for you to be able to help people out, especially at a shitty time like this. Shitty yeah. times, yeah. With the direction of live stream, um, have you guys started reaching out or going into that direction? Because I just saw where it's kind of becoming a thing now, where I saw a couple of uh, mainstream artists that were doing, um, like I saw Japanese Breakfast and this Paul Cawthon dude, they started uh, like selling tickets to these live events. And it seems like it's it's going well where the people watching aren't minding paying for a ticket and they still get to see their, like I'm seeing like people reposting yeah. their computer and being like, oh, I can still get to see my artist. Yeah. It's gonna be a thing. I think that's gonna stick around forever, right? Yeah, I think there's yeah. a lot of that kind of stuff you know, that's gonna take think about over. Like kids, like kids that aren't like 15 years old and can't go into a concert or can't buy. Like they could just yeah. Well, I mean, what's this, right when they did the Fortnite concert yeah. thing? It was like almost a billion Travis, people. Travis yeah, Scott, that was unbelievable. That's nuts. <laughs> but I mean, wow. you figure all those people connected to Fortnite. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, man. Are you guys looking into avenues or talking to people about doing stuff like that? We should. We should. We should. Yeah, I mean, I, we are doing. We are doing lives. Yeah, we did a live show. I think it was last. What was it? Yeah, last week. And we'll do more last week. Uh, leading up to the album. Yeah. We should do one over here sometime, man. This is yeah. Oh, no, I was going to offer. Uh, all yeah. we'd have to do is set up some lighting, and I could set it up with my buddy and see if he'd help out a little bit. Yeah, but what right, I man. what what I I wanted to do that down here, but I'm not I'm not going to be able to bring people down here because originally the plan was in that back corner. I was like going to put a. You know, we were going to light it up. We have enough cameras. And then I was going to kind of do like an unplugged acoustic style shit and then put like 25 chairs here, put some food over here. And then people who were friends or like fans of you guys or me and take 10 different people and then start having solo shit like that and then Little streaming it live. Place. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty dope. So, I mean, I'm going to have to change the whole angle. And like, you know, there was uh, another guy that was talking about coming on here and then we were actually going to shoot the whole show live. And like my buddy was going to uh -huh. come down and like switch the camera angles and add the lower thirds all the annoying shit i have to do in editing but uh we could definitely 
figure something out. I'm not opposed. I mean, yeah, we've been fun. working together for so long. It's crazy to see how far the two of us actually progressed from that's like awesome, man. when I met you and I'm like, here's a t-shirt. You're like, here's a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. That's good to see, man. Yeah, you too. And like I said, when you called, uh, I was like, dude, come on. I'm like, I'll crank it out tonight and you'll be up tomorrow. Like, I mean, I got this down. I mean, dude, it was crazy when I first started doing this. It'd take almost a month to edit a podcast. It was just anxiety and me on YouTube videos with seven year olds telling me how to do it. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. but uh, now we could definitely do something live yes, down here. Yes, It'd be cool. I just do because you guys have a lot of instru instruments in it too. Like, it's not mm -hmm. just a track where you'd be rapping over it, it's yeah, like guitars yeah, yeah. and yeah, the yeah. whole thing's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was big. That was big for us to go to like all live instrumentation. Yeah. Was, I was, love it. Yeah, I love it. Once we did yeah, the first was, couple of ones, it was a wrap. Yeah. Did you do any shows like that yet, where you like played? No, and, not yet. Uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. <laughs> it, was that the direction of the tour though? Is that you were going to have a lot more? Yeah. Live yeah, yeah, instrumentals we're definitely and stuff. Have, we're definitely going to have. Uh, um, you know, we're looking to, to to kind of build it off of that you know what i mean like so rob does everything in studio so it's all yeah. studio musicians right now so we don't actually have a band right now yeah it would have to be uh, would you like to studio. take it in that direction yeah, oh, that's a goal yeah. yeah that's a goal 100 percent. it's gotta be the right everything. vibe man yeah. it gotta be the right vibe you yeah know i mean, mean? You'd it's have gotta to, be natural you'd be auditioning shit all day yeah yeah it's a bunch of people have like hit us up but it, it, like it's got to be supernatural yeah. yeah and then working with rob i mean that's a professional level it's not like a thing where you can just let friends come in and be like yeah you can play the guitar yeah <laughs> yeah right yeah. Oh, man no you gotta really play the guitar <laughs> you gotta really play that guitar yeah, man yeah, facts you know you can't yeah. be just with your buddies over there rob's a whole different animal when it comes to that you know he's on a whole different level how long did it take for him to get the whole album together? I mean, you guys go out there, you record everything, and then when you leave, he has to now take everything. And I, what is it called? Is that called mastering when they redo that, or like uh, mixing, mixing, mastering, mastering, yeah, everything? Yeah. Um, yeah, we recorded the album in September, so that's crazy. So I don't know what that is. I don't know what that equals. I mean, well, damn, it's gonna be by the time it comes out, it'll be damn near a year yeah. from the time we recorded it, almost. So you guys just wait, and then does he send you things one at a time, or does he wait till it's completely? Yeah, done? he sends yeah. us. He sends us like uh, like rough mixes, references, first references. Yeah, because I wasn't even thinking he. You got to okay all this shit, yeah. so he's got to send it back to you. Yeah, and then the two of you got to get together and listen to it or yeah. send it separately. We, we ask for the most absurd things in return. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, you know. But. I mean, like even the ice cubes dropping was like after the record was done. I was like, "Yo, Rob, <laughs> for these ice cubes." In How is he with that stuff? I mean, you've cool. you've worked with him a while, so he's cool. I mean, man. you guys are probably friends at this point. He's cool, but he's so busy. Yeah, you know. So yeah. I, I think when. Uh, it was crazy to think like when he when he released his um at the end of the year you know people were like hey man you know thanks for these people he had like a list of like probably 100 140 people that recorded their projects at his studio yeah, that's crazy because yeah. you figure and, if it, it's like 350 days yeah. in a year because i'm wow. trying to just put my head around what i try and do down here on a daily basis or like anyone does on a daily basis but then he wasn't just doing your album, right? He was uh, just, so he was he's like got to be doing this shit. I mean, I don't know. What yeah, and his, and his, uh, his super genius. His band, uh, XL the band, um, they did a lot of their recording in Italy. Yeah, that was so crazy. he was going to Italy, and then he'll be he'd be home for like you know a couple of weeks, and he'd go to Italy, and then be back for a couple of weeks, and like they was going back and forth because they were recording their album in Italy, and you're sitting in the lab all day and night. So yeah, so like you just kind of wait your turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get booked. That's crazy. You, we booked our we booked our sessions with him probably a few months out. You know what I mean? So it was probably we probably gave him the record. I would bet we gave him the record in probably June and booked the session for September. Yeah. And then we went in September and uh recorded and then now it's 6 8 months later or whatever. It's not bad though. No, I mean, for the fact yeah. that he's probably doing 140 projects at the oh, same time. He's crushing yeah. it. As soon as we left Lanaimo, I think like a week later, he went to Italy for like a whole month to go record. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, we, you know what's crazy is uh, we, knew, I, 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 we knew we was on to it because we got there and um, we got to the studio or whatever and we were walking to our Airbnb and um, 
and Rob was like, "Yeah, man." There's, I, I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm fishing chips," right? Because it was like you see the fucking planes land in the water and shit. Yeah. So I'm like, "Ah, oh, man." I'm like, uh, "Fish." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, we can get some fish and chips, man." And he was like, "Ah, oh, this place is really good. It's a really good fish and chips." So I was like, "Ah, oh, great, great." And he was like, "Yeah, there's a really good Mexican place right next to your Airbnb too." That's what so I, I wanted. So I said, like, "Cool." So we went up in the Airbnb, and and uh, he was like, "Let me show you the back." Just in case, that's what you know. The, the, they locked the front door, or whatever. So went around the back. He was like, "Ah, oh, that's the Mexican place." I was like, right, "Cool." So we go drop our bags off. We're like, "All right, let's fucking eat." You know what I mean? Go outside, and uh, and as we're walking, we're like talking about like home, kids, you know, yeah. the fucking um, life, life, and uh, we're walking up and, and we're talking about his uh, his son's mother being like, "Yeah, she's gonna believe in this thing, man." This whoo. This record, this record, <laughs> this the one. she's gonna believe in this record. That's walk up to the, to the restaurant. It says Gina's, Gina's. That's, his, that's her name, right? <laughs> I was like, look, <laughs> the sign, right? We sit down, we're sitting down and shit. We're talking and shit, and I'm like, yeah, man. We're still talking about the same fucking thing. My mom, get my mama pool, da da da. da. I'm gonna take care of my mom, man. We're gonna, we're, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna tour, we're gonna do our thing, you know, da da da. Your dad is gonna love this, right? The next song his dad's playing through the speaker at the restaurant, right? Yeah, his his dad's wild. his dad's a musician, right? Uh, the fucking craziest thing in the universe, right? Like his dad. That's nuts. And I was crazy. like, I didn't know. He was like, I'm talking about his dad. He's like, this is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild, man. Yeah, it was it's pretty, pretty wild crazy, stuff. Bro. Wild stuff. He told me to ask a waitress to turn it up. He did. He's like, turn it up. I was like. Yo, can you excuse me, miss? <laughs> can you turn up this song? I like it. He's like, tell her to dad, tell her to dad. I'm, like, I'm not doing that, bro. I, 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 can I, man? I was so hyped for my man. Yeah, uh, man. It was pretty wild, man. He was like, yo, the universe is speaking to us. Yeah, right the universe now. is speaking to us, man. Never right thought. now, we're in Gina's restaurant. Your father's song's playing. And like in the beginning of Chicken and Waffles, on the album of Chicken and Waffles, that little skit intro. Like of us being in a diner and like just yep that song yapping. is the same. That's the song. Like the song that's in the background while we're talking. That's the song that was playing like while we were in that restaurant. It's right. funny you uh, tell that story because uh, the album feels very connected. It doesn't feel like it's all over the place. There isn't really a song that's not supposed to be there. Right. Like it's very. Uh, it's so funny because I was sitting down here and it, it was just. It was so different than other things I've listened from you or from the both of you or from the original stuff you did. And it's just. I, I mean, you have to listen to it in order to feel it. But it, it's a very connected vibe. And then to hear that story, it seems like. The two of you have been very connected yeah. through yeah. this entire thing. It's but like that a, what that's so funny though, like Gina's yeah. and then yeah, that sets the tone of trips like that. Yeah, yeah. it's a tone. And what then the next day it? we went to record. What do you call it? Like art imitating life or life imitating art, whatever how it is. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it's you're one talking of those. about. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It, it's a phrase. it is it's a, a phrase, phrase. yes. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, don't quote me, it's something like that. It's like when art imitates life. That's like what we did on the album. Yeah. Like for that little part right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty it was crazy. Stuff. That was cool, man. That was that was that was pretty cool. He wanted to go whale watching. Did you? Yeah, but yeah, it yeah, was too know, expensive. Let me tell you something. It's by a thousand each. <laughs> yeah, let me tell yeah. you something, bro. Yeah. We went in high school, and I remember <laughs> oh, it was so man. expensive that not all the kids went. Yeah, he was like, fuck yeah. I didn't go. He's like, what if we don't see no whales though? <laughs> Yo, like, first of all, you're going out on a boat. Like, what? Like, where's the guarantee that that whale's gonna come? Yeah, you know, that's number one. And it was like one hundred and fifty dollars yeah. to go to go look for, and then they to were just like, sign up to go on the boat. just to go sign up to get on the boat. Yeah, said, and then they probably take ridiculous. they yeah. probably take uh, studio pictures that you can buy for yeah. fifty five dollars. Yeah, they tell you that you can't take your own yeah. pictures. It's like Dorney Park leaving the fucking fucking Hercules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Would you, would you like a five by twelve of you staring into the ocean <laughs> at the whale's tail? <laughs> it's on canvas. <laughs> you know, and, and like, I guess. And they, so I asked. I said. I said. You can, she was like, "You're you're gonna see a whale." Yeah, you're she gonna was see like, "Guaranteed." But, guaranteed but how whale. much of the whale? Yeah, she was like, the "Are whole you just whale. gonna see? Are you just gonna see?" She didn't say that. She, she's no, she's you, sticking you, you, up for listen, that lady right they now. They kind of like that, the, I've seen videos. They show a little bit of the back. Little, Every now and then poop. you see the one where you were like, I would have not wanted to be on that boat. But when it comes <laughs> up, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then when it killed everybody. <laughs> yeah, the way she said it was like, "You're going to see the whole whale." Yeah, she was like, "You're going to see a whale." 
And I was I was sold. I thought I was gonna see the whole whale fucking water shoot out the hole. Yeah, oh. did you guys do anything in your down? Was there downtime? No, we ate a lot. Yeah, yeah just ate yeah, food, all man. different type of food. I ate a vegan cheesecake. Well, you said the food's fucking awesome over there. <laughs> What's really cool about the island there, man, is like uh, it's very much um, community, like mom and pop. Yeah. Like everybody knew everybody. Like you know what I mean? That's how you feel, right? The different restaurants. It's nothing but food and like yeah. natural. You know, no McDonald's and a lot. No, not at all. No and a lot of the, no, uh, none of that. I feel like a lot of the, um, the places were like letting you know, one hundred percent. Don't worry if you eat here, the food is all local. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I felt absolutely. like ninety percent of the places like let you know, like as soon as you went in, like, hey, don't worry, all the meats local, yeah. all the oh, vegetables the best. Is local. It's the best way. Everything it should is, be the way you eat food. You can tell it should be the was only like way. Yeah, grown there. Everything was homegrown there. And how far was the Airbnb from the actual studio? Could you Uh, walk in distance? Ah, We were walking all through that, bro. We were walking every day. Yeah, and uh, it was funny. He was like, we called Rob. was like, yeah, should we go to the hotel? He's like, no, I got the perfect place for you guys. It was was called like Jaws Place. Some shit like that. And it was like, yo, there was like like weed leaf blankets. and (laughs) They had a weed. They had a weed. They had a grinder waiting for us. Yeah, they had a grinder, papers. So it was a whole Airbnb, but it's revolved around if you want to smoke fucking weed. Yeah, it was dedicated to cannabis. We had a whole whole outside area. Just see the the water. I think Airbnbs are the way to do it, too. And sometimes it's cheaper than a fucking hotel. Absolutely. And then it's just like you're stuck in one room with two fucking beds. Yeah, whack. You're in Seattle or San Francisco? Forget getting a hotel, man. There's Like how... I don't know how people can oh, even man. afford it. We stood like in Warren if, Moon's uh, Airbnb in Seattle. Warren Moon's Airbnb, right? Oh, that's it right. Was Warren Moon's. That's right. That guy, man, his Airbnb had like the most craziest rules in the oh, world. Oh wow! You couldn't sleep crooked in there without. <laughs> <laughs> but he left good soap, though, man. Great I took soap. the soap with me. Great soap. <laughs> I took that soap with me. He had Indian pale ales in there. Yeah, yeah. He had the IPAs Beer full in there. fridge I, for I us. Loved yeah. It. That's what I'm saying is if you if you have a setup like that or like the, the place for him, you know what I mean? Like he probably drives so much business to that fucking place. Yeah. And then it's like you don't have to worry about someone being like, no smoking. Yeah, what are yeah, you yeah. doing? It's like yeah. somebody who's like, no, it's cool if you guys want to fucking smoke weed. This is the place to rent. That'll let you smoke fucking weed. Yeah. A hotel across the board. What fucking hotel does that? Yeah, you yeah. can do it. But you, can you open oh, the bro, window? You know you, man, you know how many fucking fines, bro? I'm gonna have to go Yo, I've got you. fines. I've got fines. Is that what happens? You get fined? Oh, yeah. I've bro. never been fined. Yeah. Bro, I have, man. <laughs> what do they do? Send the shit in the I mail? Have fines and fines and fines. 250, bro, every time, man. Ah, the Yo, biggest fine the, the crazy hilarious. shit. The craziest shit is that, like, I've got fines where I didn't smoke in the fucking hotel. It's just because we are clothing. Like, just walking through the lobby, they end up giving us a, a fine, man. Or the room. They say the room smells like tree. I'm not even going to lie to you. I, like, they probably have security footage of me stumbling through the hallways with a blunt <laughs> in my mouth. Or <laughs> well, the last, up in the the last one we got, the last one we got was in Virginia. <laughs> the, last, the promoter hit me oh, up like, man. yo, man. I just got the smoking fine, blah, blah, blah. So they hit him like a couple days later. I was rolling up in the hallway. And I was like, yo, bro. I said, listen, man. What, the venue? No, the, the hotel. The oh. hotel. I said, bro. So I probably, we would not have smoked in the, we didn't smoke in the room. Yeah, we did it. Then, then we realized that this guy just rolled an L in the hallway. <laughs> Bad loud. Bad. Now, yo, you guys ready? <laughs> <laughs> that is what it is. We got to yeah, pay up, man. man. You got, nope. That's the, that's nope. the, uh, what do they say? That's the uh, it's the business. Man, it's the business. That's the business, man. Yeah, can, you, can, 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 have you gotten out of fines, or are they usually you just? I've fuck? gotten out of a few. Like usually, the trick is like leave a twenty dollar bill. Yeah, you know, what I mean, you're pretty good usually. Then you the go, person who's cleaning or whatnot's not going to fucking it, bitch about it. Or yeah. it's all. It's always like, listen, man. Being a kind human is everything, right? Like being a dick would never gets anybody anywhere. So no. like, I feel like when you're nice to the maids, they're working. They don't want to, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, who knows what they got going on in their life? So I'm always on some hello, goodbye. Yeah. How was your day? Yeah, and being genuine that. with it, like, how's your day, man? Like, this sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're working, you're cleaning my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've worked a million different jobs, and then until I got older, you start looking at it through. Like, well, somebody will bitch about something in a food industry, and I'll be like, 
It's probably a bunch of fucking kids who don't want to be cooks. Yeah. yeah. The fuck do you think it is? You yeah, think yeah. there's just a bunch of people getting paid no money? We're like, yeah, yeah. I want to fucking make French fries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Especially yeah, with know. cleaning too, with mm -hmm. maids and shit like that. Yeah, man. They don't want to do that. Fuck no, dude. People sleep in fucking what? You got me coming in there. This guy sleeps in this bathroom for no reason. Has a full <laughs> bed. With the still, shower. I still yeah, choose to Bro. You know how many times I, I always think that we're going to be like, if we're on like the second floor, I have to like wake up and bang on the fucking bathroom. Like, yo, bro, are you all right? Because I always think that the fucking place is going to flood. Nah. This guy's this guy's move after a show oh, is... Oh, he'll sleep in a bath. And turn the shower on, though. And then he'll go to sleep. And then so like three hours later, the shower's still running. And you're thinking like, what a, what a dick. Well, number one, the bathroom, the ba this is, listen, the bathroom's cold, and, and what it is is that I'm I'm probably severely fucked up, like, from the alcohol, so, like, I have to go to the bathroom, and I'm like, I need it, like, that's my safe place, it's cold, then I turn the shower my on, and it steams, <laughs> you know, I bring, that's how you drown, I bring, yeah, I bring pillow. nah, I sleep right on the floor, I bring that's how you drown, I oh, you're not in the actual nah, tub, hell no, I sleep on right the on the floor, floor. I bring yeah. pillows in there, I would bring the mattress in there with me if I had to. If you wanted to see, if you wanted to see Oski, like if you wanted to know what he was like when he's all the way in his bag, and you have to just watch uh, when the when the when in fear and loathing when his <laughs> when his lawyers in the bathtub <laughs> <laughs> splashing around <laughs> the bathtub. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, uh, he'll be trying to piss. Stuff. Yo, I've been waiting for a whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. You can't even use the bathroom. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's the he's the best worst roommate. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, but that's when we used to have three people, man. It was tough because this, this guy's first. Oh, that's move. right. There's no fucking. Yeah, now it's okay. Now I got like a bed. But this guy's first move is he walks into the hotel room, walks into the middle of both beds, looks at the beds, and then unloads his suitcase. And pushes everything to one side of the bed and then lays down on the other side of the bed. <laughs> Forcing me to have nowhere to sleep, right? Cause That's split, years of experience. Split puts bro. everything I else the on the other now. bed. So then I'm sleeping with Split and sometimes he's snoring like... Oh, I snore split like, gets a, in his I have like a fucking and he's trying to cuddle with me. He just keeps rolling closer to me. So I'm like, ah, to the bathroom I go. <laughs> it's yeah, so, it's such, and that's why an Airbnb is so much better. We, yeah. we went to, uh, I do an archery thing every year and I go with my uh, my brother and like we don't care about sleeping in the same bed. Like yeah, we grew yeah. up in the same fucking room. Even with really good friends of mine, I don't care, but it's it's not, fu like if someone starts moving or fucking, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. The worst. It's the worst. I, I yeah. Luckily, I'm a bigger guy, man, so I don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> got a bad back. He's good. He's good. Um, I'll start wrapping this up. Um, where do you guys? What are your plans ahead of all this? What What do you What do you got? You're going to release the album, the pre order drops, which will be today, which when this comes out. But it's the pre order drops, and then you guys are just going to be pushing that. And then you know, what are your plans with everything moving forward? Yeah, we have. Uh, we're gonna be doing something called the Tune In Turn on Tuesdays. Yep. Basically, uh, starting on Tuesday, every Tuesday until the album comes out. So we'll be releasing a song every week at a different place. So last week we did uh, Tattoo dot com um, release five hundred miles yep. uh, on the twenty six girl like you. The video comes out. The the full video for that comes out. Oh, I was then, gonna ask. Did you guys shoot videos for any of it? Yeah, yeah man. We yeah. we went down to Orlando um, and and shot with Jack Nine Films. Um, and now we're also shooting uh, with some guys called the New Vision, uh, oh. which really talented guys out of Allentown. Um, so yeah, we'll have videos. We have videos for a girl like you. We have a video for Homegrown. We have a video for Adidas that'll be coming out, and we have visualizers for Life's a Beach and and Five Hundred Miles. And um, yeah, man, we just basically release a song a week up until the album comes out, and then just keep rocking and rolling, man. Just yep. and see what see what the world turns into. And as soon as we can hit the road, we will. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and like I said, I'll work uh, on trying to figure out some kind of live thing and we could push down the road and try and figure it out and get everything lined up so it's fucking... But I think we could do it. Um, do I don't that. think yeah. I don't think it would be a problem. I mean, it's just really adjusting lights. And uh, I mean, even if we did it over there, but I mean, we'll talk more when it's over. But uh, uh, I love every time you guys are Thank doing you. stuff. Um, the motivation, it's cool to see the growth from when you guys were kind of in here just kind of fucking around and yeah. we had the green screen and you guys were on roller coasters yeah, 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 up yeah. until yeah. like where it's like now you have an yeah. album you're doing videos like it wasn't i mean we I, have a team too now man like we yeah. have uh 
I, I definitely want to want to shout out like our our whole team, man. Right? We have um, we're using these uh, working with um, True Optics Photos. So yeah. all of our photography now is is uh, we're working with the same photographer um, constantly. Uh, we had an executive producer on the album, uh, our our very close homie Stony J, yeah. um, who who basically helped us. On, on a creative level throughout the album and and um it's just helping us with a lot of the the back end stuff yeah. um we worked with uh working with um several different tattoo artists they're doing prints and stuff like that for us um obviously split devo we're working with josh groman um and we're working with frank guther yeah. so um different tattoo artists man and and um a dope lawyer and you know what yeah. i mean like we 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 kind of have a whole team now you know what i mean so yeah. i think that i think that's was important for the growth yeah i think we focus more of like building something home internally instead of focusing on building a fan base here yeah you know like let's build like a strong unit here and let's put this out to the world and then like, whatever happens like as far as yeah you know? people put focus on trying to gain fans yeah like it's like from like yeah, that's it's, cool it's, it's, like, it's ridiculous that's kind like of super even cool and all but like yeah work on building a team a solid home team and then world, whatever you know? happens yep. where can uh anybody purchase the album when it's uh well for the pre-order where do they go to and uh then just plug both your social medias well, at the pre pre order, you can order the album on any digital streaming service of your choosing, right? Or go to uh, the website spacecamp four twenty dot com, you know, and that's basically like where you can pre order it. Yeah, yeah, and our social media is yeah. for uh, Space Camp four twenty. Yeah. So really trying to to build up our uh, our YouTube. Like we said, we did a lot of uh, really cool visuals. It's so. not easy to do that, man. <sighs> it's crazy. It's crazy. What's crazy is just like it, all it takes is for, and I do it now. Somebody was like, "You have so many goddamn subscriptions," and I'm like, "I don't fucking care." I'm like, "You know how hard it is to get a subscription." I'm like, "It matters that I fucking did that for that person." Oh, yeah, I'm man. like, "Dude, it's so hard." Damn. I have people watch the podcast constantly and then don't subscribe. Yeah. I'm just like just fucking just, subscribe because you gotta hit certain thing. numbers and shit even with instagram it's like you gotta hit fucking ten thousand fucking followers before they allow you to swipe up and i'm like what the fuck man yeah it's, it's the truth man. it's like it, I, it, I filled out all this YouTube shit for a thing. business yeah, let me YouTube. fucking do it yeah. right <laughs> like yeah. i'm not fucking and what do what do you even care if everybody can sell shit yeah and, and here's the thing the, what's crazy about the monetization shit for me is like all right you guys are saying like you have to have like whatever it is X amount of subscriptions and X amount yeah. of hours of views. But like, like you're saying like, well, what about a company that might not be work Like want to be worried about these 400 or these 500 or these 900 people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, that's where their business is. Like, what the fuck does YouTube lose? Like you're paying out Nothing, less money. Man. Nothing. Yeah. They lose. They switched up that algorithm. I remember my buddy Andy was uh, actually making a couple bucks off of YouTube, and then they just switched the algorithm. Now it was like ten thousand subscriptions, and you have to have so many hours. You, you know what like, the reason what is? What the fuck? The reason is is because somebody would do something where like the cat jumped off the table and they would get like 10 million views or like their kid did something silly. Yeah. yeah. And they get like it's a, like a viral thing where they have like. 10 subscribers it's like their family but they have like 10 million views yeah so they're owed a good of fucking a good penny uh, and youtube I see. was so like it's off the back yeah. end to so, stop paying people for a viral video not so much as they don't yeah. really it's not even them caring about fucking businesses it's nah, man, having YouTube, to pay out youtube wants your channel to be like a tv channel yeah, yeah. I mean, they, that's they want constant content. content yeah they want constant yeah. content and, and they want you to have uh yeah <laughs> they wanted to be gd that was another thing right because like, they want it to be the disney channel well, now that you have to select whether or not it's kid yeah. friendly like talking about subscribers like when we were doing first running ads and stuff like that we were getting flagged on all our content just because we're out there just smoking weed all over the table and like we couldn't even run an ad yeah we, then, we, i mean it was a nightmare yeah, at it first, forced us it was, to like it was it forced us it forced us to get like more creative on how how are we gonna put this image without like what the hell we rap about in the videos right so that forced us to be more creative and i think we've been doing better yeah you know yeah it's funny the way youtube is turning into what we walked away from to enjoy YouTube. Wow. Like it's right? just going to turn into fucking what until it was when we were growing shit, up. Until and, some new shit happened. Yeah. There's a new one out uh, now. I, it was like one of these YouTubers, 
started it. I don't. I fucking I can't remember what it was called. There's a couple but out Stoney there. Stony J was telling me about it. And it there's it, it like looks Breacher, like, and then there's another one, and then there's uh there's a couple of that are out there that stand alone, and you can yeah. actually make. Like if I got if I got what I was pushing on my YouTube to these other channels, I would be getting I don't know a couple bucks a month, but it's better than nothing. But then how do you talk somebody? It'd be like starting a sports. It's XFL. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck's watching? Yeah, it? Vince don't catch a break. That's two times now. I'm not. I'm not saying that the <laughs> coronavirus. I'm not saying the coronavirus had right? a chance, but it's like it's very hard. Yeah, I right, mean, right, my right, dad right. watched it occasionally, and they 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 were start they were getting more eyes on it than they did before. But it's like, how do you how do you you know? It's like even Fox Sports. It's like, how is that? It you got ESPN. Yeah, it's hard to you compete. know. UFC wouldn't have jumped to ESPN if Fox Sports was the same fucking thing. Yeah, it's hard That's to compete true. with Disney, right? Yeah, and then now you got Disney. Wait, what's fucking up with Justin Gage, you beat the shit out of Tony yeah. Ferguson, huh? Oof. Dude, I was so lit up by the time that came on. We took edibles at the beginning of the, the <sighs> night, and my one buddy had never took them before, so we my buddy handed them out, and he got it from Vegas, so it wasn't like some weird cookie that you just yeah. eat a piece of it and you're gone for three months because yeah. it wasn't leveled out correctly <laughs> yeah. so we were then we then my buddy was like look just don't don't mix your drinking too much with it and i've done edibles before and i'm having a couple drinks then later on my buddy came and was like let's take more edibles and then i wasn't thinking about combining what i had drank with the second edible Dude, I had one eye open, and I'm just trying to argue with people. I'm like, I'm like, Tony's not losing, man. Fuck you. And they're just like, we're, 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 what are you like, watching? We're like, we're rooting for Tony, Mike. Um, why are you yelling at us? And I'm just like, fuck you, man. And like two of my buddies were small, and I was like, why don't you stand on his shoulders to suck his dick? I'm like, fuck everybody down here. And then like I, the next day, I just get a text, because I just woke up. I had like three Uncrustables in my bed. The place is trashed. Like everybody laughed, and then I'm like, I, I get a text, ding, and then my buddy goes, "Who gave Mike steroids the last 15 minutes of the night?" He got <laughs> fucked up. He got fucked up bad, and yeah, I knew he, he did, was getting man. fucked up. And I said, "I'm I'm done picking fights." I said, "I get emotionally invested in this shit. I'm like pissed off." It's like the girls fight on the undercard because I lost it, and it was just all this building up and yeah, then he too was much booze. Tagged. He got there was. Francis looked crazy too. Oh, oh who's gonna God. fight him? I mean, DC said he's gonna him fight out? him, but why would you call that man out? That's Oof. a man who you fight when you have to fight him for the belt. Well, you don't say, "I'm gonna go through him to go get the belt." You're out of your mind. My he's man awesome. threw a left hook from hell. Yeah. It was just chaos, and then he he missed two, and then the third one. The dude was out for like four minutes. Yeah, he was. He was four leaning. minutes. Yeah, that dude's fucking nasty. I don't know what they're gonna do with him because. The steep A and DC things holding yeah. everything up, and then we got to let them fight. And then Francis was like, "Okay, so if DC and Steep A fight, then D whoever wins, he has to fight Steep A for the belt. If so, so DC wins, he retires. Then the belt's out so there. Then yeah. a, and so then, then Francis is like, i 'I'm out for a fucking another year. He goes, I fought one time this year, and I was just like, oh, well, I didn't. Well, and then yeah, no I mean, one I will think, fight him. I think if DC yeah. won and DC retired, then they yeah. would have to just do. A but then intro. Francis is like, when when are they going to do that? He's like, the, he's like, Stipe will take another six months off. He's not, yeah. I mean, Stipe's getting up there and he's a firefighter. Like Francis is like, I'll be out for another year. Give me somebody now. And I'm like, who's going to fight him? No one. I'll he's tell you right now, him. DC don't want no parts of that, man. No, he, he would just, Hell he would no. just try and take him down immediately. DC would take him down. But yeah. And then it's like, you could say Francis has any type of takedown. It's DC. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I love fights. I love that it's back. The fights were good last night, too. You know who got fucked up last night was Anthony Smith. Yeah, He man. got fucked up last night. It was Poor the same guy. thing with Tony. He got the broken orbital socket. Poor guy, man. Got trashed. <sighs> yeah. I love the sound of the gloves slapping the face. Like, it's so, like, you hear it sometimes, like, when they connect with a yeah. big blow and all the fans are going. Yep. But now you hear it, you're like, wow, I do not want to get punched like that. Ever. I definitely want Ever. fans back, but Ever. I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind the shit talking. I, I, I think don't mind this Fight Island it. thing is going to be cool. Ah, I can't wait for Fight Island. That's, that's, that's so literally much fun. Mortal fucking Kombat. Yeah, dude. like Mortal Kombat or those literally, old Bruce Lee Shao movies. Song, yeah. Come to my island. Well, they're saying that, that, that Habib is going to fight. Um, Gaethje, Gaethje September now because I guess Khabib's dad's in the hospital so they were going to do July but it doesn't seem like he's going to make it he's going to come I think Gaethje said he wasn't going to fight in July though Oh, maybe it's that. Mm. But I know they said September, and then Connor's trying to interrupt the whole thing. Of course, and he's like, yeah. of course he is. Now he, now he wants to fight Gaethje, right? Yeah, he just wants some yeah. traction. He wants but, some traction. But they said way. that they don't know if they'll let Connor fight because they'll lose like almost 20 million gate. 
Mm. It's like they can put it in an arena, sell it the fuck out, and, and Dana's like, I don't know if we want to lose. We don't, we don't know if we want to lose the gate. So it's it's going to be weird. But I, I hope they do Masvidal, Connor, Fight Island. That's what I want. That'll be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> my buddy's like what are we gonna do I'm like we're gonna get an eight ball I think I think, I think, Jorge, I think Jorge I think Jorge I think Jorge trashes him man. I don't know I don't know Connor's my guy I'm not getting into a conversation like this but um, no I mean I love that fight it would just be stand up it would be violence it'd be it's, violence it'd be, super it'd be violence it'd be super violence I like violent. Connor too man no, yeah, 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 I like violent. Connor too but then they might do uh, Usman um, they might do Usman fucking Masvidal which I don't care yeah. about, but they're trying to push that. But I mean, Jorge's going to get. Too but big of a, he's and too Jorge's big of a star gonna, right yeah. now, bro. If, yeah. if they say, "Do you want to fight Usman?" Dumb, he'd be dumb. To, he, I mean, yeah. well, I can't say. I, w- I wouldn't say that, but I wouldn't see him uh, turning down the. the you, it would how do you be, turn down Connor, biggest, bro? It'd be the biggest UFC fight of all time. Yeah, yeah if you're a fighter, bro, how, like, how do you turn down fighting yeah. Connor? And it's not going to. And I don't think it's going to end the same way that the Diaz fight one went. I think that. Somebody will be finished. It's not going to be a cut or like weird stuff. Oh, somebody's getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's going to be it. Yeah. Crazy. I don't know. Connor yeah. looked crazy against Cowboy. So I know. And anytime I say that, my friends who hate Connor are like, "Yeah, it's a bad matchup. It was a bad matchup." Oh, he looked good. Yeah, he looked good. They both look Cowboy, good. Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboys. A, Cowboys like a toss up. You know, like. He'll yeah, win, what does he do now? Lose. Yeah, like Cowboy just keeps rocking and rolling. Man. Yeah, because he, he lost to Pettis, but he don't give a fuck. He's yeah. like, he's like, all right, the jitters are over. He's like, I, I want to be back. I yeah, he'll be back. fight yeah. next week. If he had yeah. a fight. And my buddy's like, I don't want him fighting again. And I'm like, the reason you love him is the reason you're going to hate him. He, it's going to be Chuck Liddell. He's going to keep going until someone says, you have to stop. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's crazy. He's like one of those. He's like the heel in wrestling. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gotta UFC, have a man. Yeah. It's good shit. I'll talk UFC all day. I'll let you guys go. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Um, what was it again for the pre order? iTunes, anything like that? Yeah, any, any, any place, man. Just look up uh, cool. Space Camp, Camp with a K. I'll have all yeah. the links in the uh, in the promotional stuff, and then I'll get this all to you guys. Thank you so much for coming on. And if you want to watch anything more or find anything out with Never Again, it's all on neveragainstudio.com. Thank you guys. Beautiful. Thank you for having us, man. Peace and love.